It's a recessive. So let's take a look at the picture. It is very clear. So let's say this is from your father, the red one from uh, the red one from your mother, blue one from your mother uh, from your father. Let's assume. So you can see that okay, the P, this P gene. So this is the one gene here. This gene it is both big P allele they are at the same locus okay same locus so we call it homozygous dominant for another gene they occupy a different locus okay different locus that means different gene different locus they have different gene in this case it carries the small a small a allele we call it homozygous recessive last one again it occupies different locus big b small b in this case we call it heterozygous dominant because only the dominant allele b will be expressed the recessive allele small b will not express its phenotype. So remember we talk about independent assortment in the meiosis. Independent assortment of, of the meiosis occur in... I hope you still remember which phase. Uh, let me give you five seconds to refresh your memory. See if you remember. Independent assortment occur in meiosis. During which stage? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, time's up. Uh, independent as someone in meiosis occur in metaphase one. Okay. So, um, before we talk about independent as someone of the Mendel's law, we want to talk about dihybrid cross. What does it mean, dihybrid cross? Di means two. So we are talking about two traits at a time. So remember, Mendel studied the uh, one trait at a time. Now he becomes uh, ambitious, so he wants to study two traits at a time. See if the two traits, they will be um, of any uh, changes. So you know the differences between monohybrid and dihybrid cross. Monohybrid cross is a one trait, studying one trait uh, at a time. Dihybrid cross study two trait at the same time. So let's take a look at this. Wow, it looks very complicated. Okay. So you can see that um, in the dihybrid cross, we study uh, the pot color, yellow or green yellow or green we also study the pot shape the pot shape can be round or wrinkled round or wrinkled so um, well don't worry I will not ask you to do the hybrid cross in the exam. I will not ask you to do the hybrid cross in the exam, but I will ask you to do mon uh, a mono hybrid cross in the exam. Mono hybrid cross. That means the Punnett square. Only the four cases. Okay. I will ask you to do Punnett square, a uh, mono hybrid cross in the exam. But doesn't mean that you don't need to study anything about the uh, dihybrid cross. I expect you to memorize the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross, which is 9331. 9331 is the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross. You don't need to memorize the um, genotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross. But I want you to memorize the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross, okay? 
I already told you in the video it's 9331 phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross okay let's continue with the uh, Mendel's laws of uh, independent assortment um, So basically, um, what it means is that the allele of each gene, they, they separate. What do you mean? They don't affect each other. Meaning that Remember the previous example, the pot color and pot shape? The pot color um, separate or segregate during meiosis and the pot shape also separate or segregate um, during meiosis. But they don't affect each other. They are not related to each other. It does meaning that, oh, let's say if you have the, a round shape of the seed, of the seed, it doesn't mean that round shape always associated with, let's say, yellow color. No. The yellow color of the pot can be associated with uh, round or wrinkle. It doesn't matter. So they are independent of each other, has no effect. The one trait is independent of each of the other, of, of, of the other trait. This is what we call uh, Mandel's laws of independent assortment. So the main reason is that the two traits they are located in uh, two different low low side low side yeah they are located in two different low side therefore they they don't affect each other. Let me give you another example. Okay, Labrador retriever, Labrador retriever the dogs. Then you can see the two traits, they are independent of each other. So let's take a look at this example about uh, the Labrador Retriever. We are looking at the color of the coat, black versus chocolate color. And we are also looking at the vision, whether the dog has a normal vision or blind. So as you can see that uh, for this example here, the dog has both black and normal vision. But doesn't mean that black dog always have normal vision. In the second case, a black dog can have blind vision. And chocolate dog or can also have normal vision, but chocolate dog can also have blind vision. So what it means is that the two traits, they are independent of each other. They are not related or associated with each other. That's why we call it independent assortment. Um, getting one trait does not mean that you will have the other trait. But if we take a look at this black, coat and normal vision they are both dominant allele they are both dominant um, you you the dog will be blind only when the dog has the um, homozygous recessive allele the dog will be chocolate color only when it gets the a recessive allele, homozygous recessive, small b. In other words, the chocolate blind dog got both recessive allele. It's homozygous recessive in both traits. So can you predict which dog has the most uh, number? Which dog has the least number? Well, Let's take a look at the next slide. 
So when you do the F2 dihybrid cross, you will get similar result. 9, 3, 3, 1. So this 9331 uh, dihybrid cross uh, phenotypic ratio also follow or also being consistent with the um, with the uh, Labrador retriever that we talk about now. So. What if we don't know the genotype? How do we know the um, how do we determine the genotype if we don't know? So let's say uh, we have a black Labrador Retriever. Okay, how do we know that the black Labrador Retriever is big B, big B? That means homozygous dominant, or is the is the uh, Labrador, the black Labrador retriever is a uh, big B, small B, heterozygous dominant. How do we know that? How do we know which one? We don't know. Therefore, a uh, dog breeder, well, or geneticist, we come up with something called test cross. Test cross is basically mating individual of dominant phenotype but unknown genotype. Just like the, the example I just told you, big B, big B or big B, small B, with a homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive, meaning that we know that it is a small B, small B for sure. So we cross this with small B, small B, and then we cross this with small B, small B. So let's take a look at the uh, example in the next slide. So we see that in here, this black Labrador retriever, well, we don't know the genotype. Since it is black, we know that, okay, it carries one allele of big B. The other allele we don't know. So we cross this black dog with the chocolate dog, which is a small b, small b, the recessive, homozygous recessive. So you only have two cases, right? Um, the black black dog, okay? It can be big b, big b, that means homozygous dominant, or big b, small b, homo, uh, heterozygous dominant. Either case, it will give you the black dog, okay? When we cross the big b, Big B, the black homozygous dominant with the uh, small b, small b homozygous recessive. All the offspring will be black because all the offspring will be heterozygous dominant. So we'll get all black. This situation is similar to the Mendelian experiment, the P generation purebred and getting the F1. Okay, this situation. Okay, the second situation is something that we have not studied before. It is the um, heterozygous dominant cross with the homozygous recessive. We have not studied this. Now this is the first time we see this. So you see that, okay, this is, well, we call it meiosis here. So the gamete will be either big B or small B for the black dog, but the gamete from the chocolate dog will all be small B. So we will get approximately 50% of the heterozygous dominant, that means black dog, or 50% of the homozygous recessive, that means the chocolate dog. So you get one black one chocolate. In other words, you will get 50%, 50-50%, 50-50%. So the, um, 
So the phenotypic ratio is 1 to 1 or 50-50%. The genotypic ratio is also the same, 1 to 1 or 50-50%. Okay? So the phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio will be the same in this case. They are both 1 to 1 or 50-50%. But, but for this example here, The phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio is also the same, but they are 100%. Phenotypic ratio is 100% black. Genotypic ratio is also 100% heterozygous dominant, big B, small b.